or Leslie Pickers following the money, his returns less are, are obviously better. Uh, and there's a long way to go. Yeah, 10.4% in the year through July 10th. So that's certainly a comeback of sorts. The question is when you can actually call it a comeback, what time frame it, it makes a comeback. As you know, Scott, he invests in very concentrated positions. So there are a few positions in his portfolio that have done particularly well year to date that have helped drive this comeback, namely Chipotle, ADP, um, you know, and then there are the ones that aren't doing so well, aren't, you know, as sizable of positions like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Why you, you spend a lot of time looking at this space. Um, you know, there are, I mean, what was it, Jim Stewart yeah. on Friday had a, a column in the New York Times talking about how the struggle that remains for hedge funds. Yep. Yeah, you, and I think he was right. Look, the way I look at it is, and put Bill aside for a second, is that there are so many funds to invest, and putting up 10% is not unusual mm -hmm. if you know where to look, that I just don't want to bet on somebody that's, I wouldn't say blown up, but look, he's had a number of bad years. And then if you add back that Target special vehicle that was $2 billion, that went up a smoke into his overall returns, it's not a great story. So clearly a very smart guy, clearly has a nose for stocks. But, but number one, if, my, if I were getting paid on performance, there's no percentage in going to somebody that blew up or had really bad performance because your boss will tell you why to do it. Now, I don't have that over me. But yeah. still, I just think it's going to be a tough road the, to go. The other thing is that of this, you know, comeback, if you want to call it that, or at least on the comeback trail, mm -hmm. the better returns um, come while he's been uh, a lot quieter. Exactly. Keeping, and he, he said he was going to sort of step back from being in the public eye uh, all the time and making these uh, appearances uh, and just focus on doing his job. So the last public fight he had was ADP. This year he's taken positions or he's disclosed positions uh, in a few companies, uh, namely uh, most recently Lowe's, which, you know, so far we haven't seen much in the way of kind of public, uh, you know, debate with the company. UTX, same thing. We don't exactly know kind of what his hopes are. Uh, I'm told that they haven't actually decided uh, whether or not to make anything public with regard to any kind of strategy changes there. So you're seeing kind of him take a step back uh, and basically his portfolio now um, the returns can be attributed to just really good stock picking this there's year. absolutely no way to look at six months worth of performance and be able to figure out what the next six months or one year or two years will be for a discretionary manager so if you're putting fresh money into this thing um, you're making a decision purely based on your gut and your opinion of him personally and whether or not you think he's learned certain lessons or um, some kind of nostalgia for big winners he's no, but had. There are, no, but know, there are ebbs and flows. There's, there's of, no uh, evidence to be able to make this decision. I would, I would, there come are, on. But From an asset allocation standpoint, if you are putting money, first of all, you have to credit what he has done so far in terms of both performance and perception. Why give do you have man, to do that? Because you have to give the man credit. What are the three-year numbers? What are the five-year numbers? Have to give him credit. So have to give him money. From an asset allocation standpoint, to answer what would be the three or five years, you're in a, a bull market that we have seen now since, what, 2013, 2014? That's okay. basically the start of it. If you are the belief that the market at some point could experience some form of volatility, then the right place to be is to put some money with hedge funds. Because hedge funds okay, in a so volatile 10, down market. This yeah. one? In a hedge fund, well, here's in a the, down here's the market, other should outperform. Bill Ackman, so far year to date, has done exactly what he said he's going to do on a three to five year basis. I agree with you. Maybe the performance. The typical hedge there. fund in a bear market does not beat an allocation of half stocks, half treasuries. So you could just take less risk also. Yeah, but in 08, you don't have to be short the market. But, uh, in 08, they did. They, well, you don't have all, to be short the market. You I'm not can just take less short. risk. I'm not first saying of all, to be short all, you're the market. Taking don't, more you guys risk just don't talk funds. over each other, okay. okay? It just doesn't do anything for anybody. Okay. You, you're not taking l more risk by being in a hedge fund necessarily. I didn't say that. I agree. Say take I agree. Okay. okay. In terms of Ackman, though, he's got a very liquid, por liquid portfolio and very liquid names. If he were willing to give investors no lockup, because the lockup of two years right. or three years only serves him. It doesn't serve his investors. So if you're trading lows, why do you need to lock the money up for that long? Well, he would say it's because he wants to see his ideas play out. If which makes, which and, makes and, sense. And if he's right, he'll keep the money. Let me ask you this. You know, wrong, you have the can right you to make leave. an argument, as maybe Barron's does, um, and they do with his publicly traded vehicle, that he is himself, uh, at this point, an undervalued asset that deserves a look? He's had some... You know, obvious uh, critical errors. I would right? say he yes. wouldn't be in the position he 
he is in now, had he not. Uh, it's a coin Let's toss. Look at you can, stock. Yeah, you could, you, could find, you could find examples of that where a manager has just been completely forgotten by people because they had a tough stretch and then they make a big comeback. And then you could find examples where they have a touch, tough stretch and it never gets better. There's absolutely no way to know. This John Merriweather <clears throat> blew up three times. Yeah, how could you know? You know, you don't know. So I'm saying, do you work? I'm not saying don't. Do you work? Have the conversation. See if you can get better terms than the lockup he's giving, then have a go. He's a bright guy. He's got a good record in the past. It's not that people become stupid overnight. You have to come but in if, with a billion you, dollars to get better if, terms, if, though, if right? Last like, point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you want to find somebody who's undervalued, you know, somebody who is a good investor but has gone through a bad streak, what I don't understand is why do you pay the 2 and 20 for this? You can find all sorts of value investors. I'm not going to name its names because a lot of them had hard times with things like GE recently, but really legendary investors that you pay one quarter of what you're paying these guys. And just look at their 13F and buy the stocks that you want. Assume they'll be there longer than a quarter. Right. You don't need to pay two and twenty to trade Nike. Not, not for somebody's long only. Right. Y'all done? I lied. The last point's going to Leslie. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much, Scott. No, um, what I would say, uh, you know, kind of the last point with regard to this is insiders have been buying about $300 million worth of stock. Clearly, the people at Pershing Square believe that this, you know, this company, this firm is due for revitalization. Whether that's, you know, the case or not, uh, you know, remains to be seen. Um, but certainly they're putting, uh, you know, their money where their mouth is. And, you know, time will tell what the next six months hold with regard to returns. No. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.